Good morning and thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you a project that I'm extremely passionate about and also something that we did this year to uh, take up the challenge of COVID-19. I just need to mention the, the YES project sponsored by uh, entities from Germany which is part of a, a collaboration between us, Namibia, Mozambique and German colleagues and this project forms part of this collaboration. Before I start, just a, a kind of a disclaimer to feel, get rid of my feeling of inferiority, talking to a bunch of researchers that do very high processing machine learning coding. And I'm talking to you about something kind of equivalent to building puzzles. Uh, so I, in a way, I feel like a great art teacher talking to teachers teaching uh, matric maths. But I'm sure I'll be able to convince you that this is relevant to everyone that's part of uh, machine learning research in the country. So I hope that uh, when you listen to me, you will understand that I am part of your skills pipeline. Uh, the research in very high level coding in South Africa and in the world is dependent on getting new people coming in, in as first years as software developers. And that's where our focus lies. I don't think I need to convince any of, of the listeners to this talk of the desperate shortage regarding software developers in our country. As a, a professor in, in programming at our university and involved with engaging with industry, we sometimes weekly get emails or telephone calls from industry partners desperately looking to employ software developers. In our home city, I, for example, know of one company who has to fill 26 new software developer posts by the end of this year. In East London, there's a global corporate that for the past year or two have been trying to fill 50 new software developer posts. And they, like may I call it pipe dream, is that these graduates all must be M or PhD graduates. We are all very aware that our government understands this and that our president uh, and some of his cabinet ministers often talks about the fourth industrial revolution and their plans to address these issues. We are also aware that they want to bring in coding and robotics into our primary schools as subjects and they actually had plans to roll it out to a thousand schools in 2020. But there's a reality check for government and for all of us. And many of my students over the past years have often reminded me of this. Of the 26,000 schools in our country, 15,000 do not have their own computer laboratories. And the government has estimated that it will cost on average a million rand per school to equip schools with computer laboratories. But the challenges go much further than just infrastructure. I think we will all have a sense that most teachers are simply not equipped to teach uh, coding and robotics. A lot of the content for coding and robotics is not uh, adapted yet for South, the South African context and still needs to be localized. Uh, schools need technical support. Many of us are aware of labs that were installed in schools and that are simply not functional because there's no technical support. And then living in South Africa, the safety and security issues rel related to PCs and laboratories is huge for schools. So when my student and myself set out on a project in 2017 to introduce a coding uh, to, to learners, especially from disadvantaged communities, we had the following additional uh, objectives. We said to ourselves, there's no ways that we can be dependent on expensive computers or robots. We definitely wanted to expose learners and make them aware of the, uh, careers in software development. And there's no ways that it would, would have worked if it was not fun. So in 2017, Byron Batterson, an honor student in our department, developed the Tanks app that makes use of mobile phones, customized tokens, and image recognition to allow learners to build code with their tokens 
and then to see it execute on the screen. So the basic idea is that you need to move a tank on the screen to a specific destination. You then use your uh, tokens to build your code on your table or, or on your surface. You take your phone and you take a photo of these tokens. Through image recognition, the tokens are internalized and are then executed, moving the tank on the screen. The coding concepts that I introduced through this game are the concepts that I would be teaching my first year programming students in their first six months, which includes loops, the for loop and the while loop, the if statements, nested loops and constructs, as well as optimization of code. Because we have 35 levels of increasing complexity, the whole concept of gamification also kicks in when uh, learners start playing, and therefore it is always huge excitement and great fun when we have workshops uh, with Tanks. Tanks was our original app developed in 2017. Uh, since then we've developed two further coding apps. The one is Rangers, with a theme of additional theme of game poaching in Africa. And then Boats focuses on marine pollution. And we've just added another content to Boats which focuses on renewable energy. All three of these apps introduce coding concepts, but the later two also now have environmental emphasis. So since 2017, we've been, been presenting workshops across the country and also in some other countries. And we estimate that we've reached way over 20,000 learners through these direct workshops. In addition to this, there's also the learners that played the games at their schools and other events that we were not involved with. I have many stories of individuals' lives that were impacted over these three years. I guess there are many that I don't know of, but just one story is Tulumanku, who uh, stays in Zwede Township in Port Elizabeth. In, at the end of 2018, we had a national championships at Santon Convention Center, where he came seventh in the country. We later managed to get him a, a spons sponsorship from Dimension Data, and he's now studying at Alexander Road, one of the top IT schools in our province. Uh, he will be doing IT from next year and is well on track to study BSc Computer Science after matric. During mid-2019, we introduced our school kits, which includes uh, lesson plans as well as instructional videos and other resource material that are aimed to equip and empower schools and teachers to start their own coding clubs in their schools without needing a computer laboratory just by playing our games. Since June last year till about February this year, we probably distributed way over 100 school kits to schools across the country. And teachers were all ready to go and to start implementing it in 2020. But as we all know, uh, end of March, COVID-19 hit South Africa and everything came to a grounding halt. Also for our interactive workshops, for the plans teachers had to introduce tanks and rangers in their schools. All of these were dependent on interaction, uh, kids touching different puzzle pieces, uh, interacting with each other. So all of this was immediately put on hold and we went into a two, three weeks of limbo, not really knowing what to do for the rest of the year. So after not really doing much for the first two or three weeks, um, I said to myself, but we need to come up with a new strategy, otherwise 2020 will be totally lost. So the reality was that we need to do something, but no physical interaction was, was possible. So we couldn't rely on physical tokens. Learners physically had to play at home. There was no ways of getting them into a hall, into a workshop. Teachers were totally overburdened and stressed, so whatever we planned had to mean as little as possible effort for the teachers. We really wanted to make a positive impact during the pandemic, and not just be a nuisance to schools. We said to ourselves, it must be fun. 
And many teachers told us that learners uh, were craving for some fun activities during this very unnatural year. And then we also needed incentives just to get the learners interested. On a, on a bigger scale, we said to each other, and I think many projects had to say this to themselves for 2020, that although we in an unnatural state, we needed to stay in the hearts and minds of people. So when we go back to normal, somewhere in the future, they must still know about our games and the impact it can have. So we came up with a, a virtual tournament using our Boats app, where kids could play from home. In the Boats app, uh, you need to move around a boat on the grid with the same commands, move forward, turn left, etc., uh, to remove uh, plastics from the ocean. So the first change we made was that uh, learners were allowed to toggle their commands on the screen and therefore didn't need any physical tokens to play. To add to the uh, information uh, content and awareness, uh, we while they play boats, they get tips about marine pollution and also different multiple choice questions related to the themes. So themes in addition to marine pollution that we had this year were COVID-19 health issues, and in September also just interesting South African heritage facts. We are planning a global tournament in January, which will add the theme of renewable energy. In the, the aim of having as little of effort from the teacher's side, we simply prepared this one-page flyer, which was emailed or WhatsApp to the teachers, and then they all they needed to do was to forward that to their learners. Most schools were in online learning mode, so getting online um, contact with their learners was not a challenge to them, and there was nothing else expected from teachers after forwarding this flyer. We were really blessed by wonderful corporate sponsors, because corporates were also looking for a way to make an impact where the normal things that they invested in weren't uh, possible for this year. So we, we made great strides in getting corporate kind of corporates on board. So we presented three virtual tournaments during 2020, reaching around 1,000 learners, 180 schools or NGOs, and the learners in total submitted over 30,000 scores to a central database. For every tournament, we targeted a specific uh, a social enterprise that benefited from the tournament. The first one was serving coffee to medical staff in the hospitals in Port Elizabeth. Then we also sponsored Sankop that saves seabirds at the Port Elizabeth Ocean. And our last project aimed at buying shoes for learners that were impacted by COVID-19. In total, around 40,000 worth of incentives and donations went towards social entities. The learner incentives were obviously very popular with the learners. This included mainly free data, which was very relevant for 2020, also some cash prizes and tablets for the winners, and that was worth over 25,000 Rand. As an investment in the future and giving us something to do once we're back to normal, uh, sponsors also sponsored 36 school kits that were distributed to schools and NGOs across the country. A direct uh, outflow from the virtual tournaments are three coding clubs, physical coding clubs, that started in Hazyview, in Tsomo, in the rural Eastern Cape, as well as in Port Alfred, where learners are now getting together, coming together once a week, to do some coding using our, cap, our apps. We obviously also now have a huge network, not only of teachers, but also of learners having their email addresses and cell phone numbers, which gives us a wonderful network to uh, reach out to them in the future. And we've also started a partnership with SMS Portal, which will allow us to communicate with uh, learners and teachers at no cost. Being a first-year lecturer, I obviously had to make online videos for my first-year students regarding the introduction to coding. So this made us think that once we had all these learners that participated in the virtual tournaments, 
we could start with coding clubs. So all what we did is we used WhatsApp to send my my videos to them. And in this videos, the coding club ran for four weeks. The learners were introduced to data types, input and output, loops, and if statements for the C sharp language. We also identified an existing app which allowed them to do compilation on their smartphones so they didn't need computers or labs to play with. We estimate that about 30 learners will complete uh, in total our, our first and second coding club. And what's really exciting about this is how positive these learners were and are about coding now. Many have said that this has opened their minds regarding future career choices. Talking about uh, being in the hearts and minds of people, we had wonderful media coverage in local newspapers, journals, as well as radio throughout the year. But this had an additional spin-off. It's not just about our project. In all this media coverage, the message of the shortage of software developers was portrayed and given through to the public. So on a bigger scale, we had a huge success in making the public aware of the shortage of software developers and hopefully that will convince more parents and teachers and learners to consider this as a career choice. I always uh, end off my talks with this story about Yolanda Jordan who grew up in Mount Frere, a rural uh, Eastern Cape. In grade 9 in a school with no computers she re read the Da Vinci Code by Diane Brown in which they talk about algorithms and cloud computing and that started her dreaming about one day studying computer science. Four years later, she enrolled for a degree in our department. And this is the main aim of our bigger project, to get learners to start dreaming about a career choice in software development. To stay up to date with our projects and what we do, you're welcome to join us on Facebook, Games Powered by Tangible. And you're also very welcome to email me if you want to find out more. We are now open for questions. Thank you very much.